Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching this special edition of the Giga Texas update video where we talk about its current construction status and how close to production Giga Texas truly is. Welcome to Giga Texas. This is the first time I've tried something like this, but uh, I wanted to answer some questions that I get often and do it in a standalone video and hopefully you'll find it helpful. And the question has to do with production. How close is Giga Texas actually to production? When will they start doing production? What will it look like? And when people look at the factory, they say, hey, it doesn't look like it's done. How could they do that? Well, we're gonna go over that today. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, uh, how that happens, show you some videos, show you some illustrations and some information that I've gotten from uh, people that work on the site. So I hope that you find all of this helpful. And as you can hear, this is an active site, and right now we're up here by the uh, uh, battery cell structure and a lot of activity going on inside to get that fitted out. And of course, the rest of the factory is right here behind me. And uh, right now we're on the northeast corner, again, by the battery cell area. So here are the things we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk a little bit about the current information that I have and try to put that in a form that's uh, helpful for you to understand. Then we're going to look at some main factory areas as of right now, which is sort of the end of November, and kind of get a feel for what has been completed, what is in limited production right now, and answer the question, can they actually build model-wise with what they have so far? Then we're going to talk about when will additional areas of the factory start opening up. And as you can see, uh, again, with the uh, construction behind me, they're doing a lot of work to uh, fit out a lot of the interior and exterior at the same time that production is going on. And that effort's gonna go on throughout 2022 as well. So what will the bottle Y production pathway within the factory look like? Certainly in the short term, say the end of 2021 into the first quarter of 2022. And I'll kind of go through that as well. And then what is complete as far as the factory is concerned? And that answer is really that they're using an agile project management process for Giga Texas, which means they're gonna continually build out portions of the factory while production ramps at the same time. And as production gets bigger or as new products, like say the Cybertruck get ready to be produced, they will start fitting out the areas of the factory along with that production ramp to continue that production. So anyway, I hope that uh, this video is helpful and uh, let's get into it. So here's a look at the current status of Giga Texas. There are five main sections that are operational enough to be making the pre-production small scale focused on Model Y production by the end of the year. And these are the five areas, stamping body and white, casting one, paint shop and general assembly. And this uh, map gives you an idea of how they're generally organized within the factory. So let's go through each one individually. To add additional weight to the discussion about these five sections, I thought I would go over a recent development that is important uh, about these five sections. And that is that on the 19th of November, Giga Texas applied to TDLR for licensing to begin operation in these five sections. So who is TDLR and why is this important for this discussion? TDLR is the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. They are the governing body that governs the health and safety of workers in Texas. And they are the ones responsible for occupational and business licensing programs. In other words, by going through TDLR, it is a necessary and key step to allow these five sections to go into production. And this is outstanding news and again confirms the discussion about these five sections. Here's a look at two of the documents. The one on the left is for the body and white section. It's listed as $182 million for just the facility without equipment. And it's uh, listed also as 1,496,000 square feet. The one on the right is for the stamping facility. It's listed as about 159 million and 213,890 square feet. These documents are for the General Assembly and Paint Shop. The one on the left is for the General Assembly. It's listed as $493 million and 1,509,000 square feet. The one on the right for the Paint Shop 
It's listed as $126 million and about 897 square feet. And finally, this document is for the casting section. Again, it is estimated at $109 million and 229,500 square feet in size. So the combined value for all of these sections is about $1.06 billion. Again, this is for the facilities themselves. It does not include any of the equipment that goes inside. So now that we have an idea that these five sections are coming online, they're getting approvals, let's go through each and learn what each one of them does. The stamping machine structure is the area that makes the doors, hoods, fenders, the frames, basically what appears to be the parts for the body of the car are stamped out of metal rolls using high pressure stamping machines. And as you can see by the flyby in the lower right hand corner, this is where this is located at Giga Texas. And it's the first major section of the factory that was constructed. The Schuler presses, as you see in the inset photos, are kind of like large buildings of themselves. And they're located within the structure on top of isolation foundations, which are kind of like giant pits underneath the factory. The next area we visit is the body and white structure. And this is where large areas of robotic assemblers are located. And they take the parts that come from the stamping machine and the casting machine structure, and then they make the basic body of the car. As you can see by the inset video on the bottom, this is where it is located. And you can see with the inset photos, these are what some of the uh, welding machines look like. Uh, it's a very highly robotic uh, centered area. And again, they take the castings and the steel parts and they make the basic body, uh, which then will go on to the paint shop for, for further production. In the casting machine area, Tesla uses Idra Giga Presses to take aluminum that's molten and make large sections of the car. And this helps save the number of robots that are needed, saves the number of welds that are needed, and just the overall production uh, costs uh, are reduced. And this is sort of revolutionary in the automotive industry. The inset photo shows where Casting Machine 1 is located, where three gigapresses are currently operational. The other arrow shows where gigapress area 2 is being built out to host the larger 8,000 ton presses for the Cybertruck eventually. And the inset photos show what the gigapress looks like here at Giga Texas and some of the first of the castings that were made at Giga Texas as well. The next section is the paint shop area. And this area was one of the first that was made operational at Giga Texas. It uh, uses modular sections of the entire paint booth, if you will, plus the e-coating dipping for the main bodies themselves. Uh, that will decontaminate the body shell and corrosion control and for the final uh, paint. The inset photos give some inside uh, images of what that looks like at Giga Texas, plus what the process would look like as well. And as you can see by the flyby, it's just in the north central area of Giga Texas. On the west side of Giga Texas is the last operational section for the initial small scale Model Y production. It also has some of the temporary offices located on the second floor. This is the section that uh, shown in green will install the glass interior, other parts necessary to make the final cars operational. The more southerly area, uh, General Assembly 2, will be developed later to support the Cybertruck and other products as they come online. These images give you an idea of what the General Assembly area may look like under initial production as they ramp up the Model Y production for 2022. So now that we have a good idea of where Giga Texas is now and what sections can support initial production, let's look at the additional areas that will come online sometime in 2022 as production begins to ramp at Giga Texas and other products start getting introduced. And there's seven of these areas. Again, this list is sort of simplified and it's not all inclusive. The factory is enormous. It has multiple floors and there's no doubt going to be capabilities that uh, Tesla will introduce at Giga Texas that we do not know about. But these should give you a pretty good idea of how the rest of the uh, factory itself will develop over time in 2022. It should also be noted that some of the components necessary to make the initial production of the cars may be supplied by Fremont in the short term as Giga Texas ramps its inherent capability to make these parts, such as plastics, drive lines, and so forth. 
The driveline section will be one of the first new sections that will come online in late 2021, early 2022. As you can see by the map, it's located just south of the paint shop area. This is a highly automated section that Tesla uses to make the electric motors, parts, components, controllers, and the housings that are necessary to make the car operate. Plastic manufacturing will be another section that comes online quickly. This is located in the north between the paint shop and the battery cell area where there's that large bridge crane. There's a lot of interior and exterior plastic parts that are manufactured, as you can see by the inset video. And the inset photo shows what this may look like with these large machines that use these very large dies and the plastic pellets to make all of these plastic parts that are part of the final assembly of the vehicle. From what I've been told, the equipping of General Assembly 2, which is the rest of the west side of the structure, will be delayed somewhat until Model Y production ramps sufficiently for them to begin to uh, need larger uh, production spaces. This area will also support the Cybertruck and other products that are coming online later in 2022 and into 2023 at Giga Texas. On the south end of the building in that central area, in fact, the last of the major sections of the main factory to be built is what I've been told is the stamping extension area. I don't have a lot of details exactly what this is. It could be used for Cybertruck uh, steel manipulating and forming, but I do not know at this time. Also in that central area, just north of the stamping extension is an area that's called the high bay. It's a bit of a mystery. It has two very large bridge crane uh, railing systems that are uh, have been installed. And this area, uh, I'm not sure exactly what will be used for, but uh, it's obviously a key part of future production at Giga Texas. Up in the northeast corner, this is where casting machine area two is being constructed right now. And uh, this will come online later in 2022. What I've been told is this is the area where the larger 8,000 ton gigapresses that will support the Cybertruck production will be located. In addition, there's area for more of the 6,000 ton variety from Model Y. The northwest corner is where 4680 battery cells and structural packs will be manufactured, and this will happen later in 2022. In the short term, Cato Road facility in California will provide the 4680s to Giga Texas, but we've already seen production line equipment arriving at the factory, and we know that in the early parts of 2022, they will be developing that production capability and hopefully be able to produce by mid-2022 at Giga Texas. So those are the remaining major sections that will be built out in the main factory throughout 2022. But keep in mind that the construction around the site will continue well through 2022 and into 2023, even as production ramps construction will continue. Also keep in mind that Giga Texas is multi-level, and what I've talked about right now is sort of a high-level simplified discussion. There will be additional capabilities um, and products that will be coming to Giga Texas that I don't know about at this time. So now that we have a pretty good idea of how the factory will be built out throughout 2022, let's turn our attention to how the production line processing may occur in the sections that we know about. And this is for the initial small scale production that will be late 2021 into early 2022. The parts that are stamped out at the stamping machine structure, item number one, will flow into the body in white area. The castings front and rear will be manufactured in the casting machine area and then flow into body and white as well, where they are stored in racks. Area number three, the body and white, takes the stamped parts and the casting parts and it makes the basic body shell with a lot of the robotic assemblers that we've discussed. The completed bodies will enter at area four into the paint shop processing where they'll be decontaminated, e-coating, and also final paint. It'll exit at area number five to the general assembly for final production of the interiors, glass, and so forth. To do this, they need driveline components, and that'll be coming from area number six, although temporarily they may be getting some of these parts from California for the initial production. Also, area seven, the batteries will be coming from the Cato Road facility initially until they can ramp up at Giga Texas, which will be later in 2022. And finally, following processing through the General Assembly, the completed cars exit the General Assembly for future transport. In the short term, I do not know where the parking and new vehicle staging locations will be. They have yet to be constructed, but we should see that very soon, and I'll provide information on that in a different video. 
Also, keep in mind that the production processes will continue to be refined and modified as production ramps and other sections of the factory come online through 2022. So for this discussion, I'd like to try to answer the question if as best that I can is, what will the factory look like when it's completed? And that's a little bit difficult to discuss because the way Tesla is approaching this, it's a very agile, iterative uh, process where they will continue to ramp up production and continue construction and even do expansion across the site all at the same time. So there's not going to be really a, at this point, the factory is done moment. It's going to be continuing for quite some time, certainly through 2022 and well into 2023. It's worth noting a couple of other facets of the factory itself. This is a multi-level factory. It has two, in some cases, three or four floors, all of which are stressed for production of some sort, whether that be vehicles, uh, components such as electrical wiring, uh, etc., or it could be different products as well. Uh, in addition, there's a phase two construction process to extend the length of the building about a, another 500 feet to the south, or about 130 meters or so to the south. And what that will be, I do not know at this time. But we'll be seeing all of this construction going on throughout 2022 and well into 2023. It's also worth reminding uh, that the factory itself may have some sections that are not uh, fitted out, or equipped, or production ready for some time in 2022. And this will change gradually as the production ramps. So that'll be a measure that will be difficult to know watching from the exterior. And finally, I'd just like to reiterate that this is the main building itself uh, discussion that we're having, and the illustration shows how that uh, may appear. But uh, there is over 2,500 acres of land space, of which about 950 acres have some sort of construction going on as of this date. So we will be seeing uh, quite a bit of expansion across the area and in terms of capabilities and products for some time. Well, that was a little bit of a tour of production at Giga Texas, where they stand right now. What can we expect over the next coming weeks and months and into 2022? And what the factory will look like when it is complete. Uh, again, there's going to be construction going on through 2022 and into 2023. The main factory behind me will continue to get fitted out, but then there will be other infrastructure built around the factory as well. So... Just know that we're going to be seeing quite a bit of this construction for quite some time. I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that uh, the information will help put into context where we are currently with Giga Texas. And uh, again, I hope that you found this uh, kind of fun as well. So let me know what your comments are and uh, ideas in the comment section. And uh, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.